In this episode, customs find a secret compartment in a passenger's luggage. It is suspicious. 100% suspicious. Missing cargo gives everyone the runaround. Robin, get them on the front! Gonna kill him! Gonna kill him! And it's judgment day as Dubai's billion dollar runway closure begins. Dubai International Airport, the busiest global hub on the planet and aiming to stay there. Clear for takeoff. But perfection is never easy. Not finished, it's supposed to be finished. More planes to service. So we open the number three engine. More situations to deal with. What do you mean, life snakes? Oh, sorry. More smugglers to stop. This is the heroin here. And massive engineering projects to complete on time. It's non stop. 24 7. Hey! Hey! Stop! Everything is time, time, time. It's the job of 90,000 staff from all over the world to make this the ultimate airport. Dubai International Airport is a huge money-making machine. Every year, aviation contributes $22 billion to the economy. As one of the busiest airports in the world, any interruption to its schedule costs money. Emirates Airline has the largest fleet of A380s and 777s in the world. Keeping them running perfectly is vital. Uh, what I'm basically doing at the moment is just like what we call a GVI, which is a, a general visual inspection of anything you can see and miss on the ground. So I'm checking the wheels for condition, the strut, uh, any oil leaks. If Andy Tedley finds a problem when a plane's on the ramp, he fixes it there and then, ideally. Taking a plane out of service is costly. It's not earning. We've actually just got um, a task on one of our 777 300ERs, and it's coming with a left-hand engine anti-ice valve, which has been locked open. Anti-ice valves prevent ice from forming around the engines. The freezing temperatures of high altitude can fall to minus 70 degrees Fahrenheit. This is the nacelle, this is the leading edge. So you've got hot air which is fed from the engine, will heat up this whole ring on the front to stop any ice forming. Because what you don't want is thick ice to form here and then in flight it can actually break off. Ice is very heavy and what we don't want to do is to go and cause any damage to the blades or even ingest them. And he needs to get the valve replaced before the plane leaves in five hours. The valve itself is only quite small. It's in an awkward position. It's not on the top of the engine. And he needs to start, but he can't. The jet fuel in the engine can reach up to 3,600 degrees Fahrenheit. The whole engine is very hot. So you have to be, everything's hot to touch. So we normally have to wait a little while for it to cool down. While it cools, Andy checks with the captain for any other problems. The right window, the heat, the window heat. Okay. The wind shield heating has failed. Um, so I'll have to have a look at that. That is, um, that's an item that we wasn't expecting. Unexpected and potentially troublesome for Andy. Heating protects the windshield when the plane is flying at altitude. Because it's very cold outside, if we was to say have a bird strike, and this was ice cold, it's actually extremely brittle. And if, if you have a bird strike, 
the worst thing that would happen, it would just shatter. Whereas if we have the windshield heated up, it becomes slightly more flexible. If you have a, a bird strike, it will just cause it to flex rather than shatter. The onboard computer system logs faults. Now it's showing a problem with the other side of the windshield as well. Now it's a bit more of an issue because we've got, our, we've got the left and the right hand side which have got faults. This could impact the whole Emirates schedule. The aircraft can fly safely with a fault on one side. With both sides damaged, it's risky, not something Emirates will want to chance. But it's not a simple fix. The whole windshield needs to be replaced. When and where it's repaired is a decision for Emirates Network Control Center. They must decide whether to fix the windshield on the stand or to take the plane out of service. We've been in contact with the office. At the moment, it's a 50-50 chance whether the aircraft will go or not. We're expecting a call. It is now 10 past 10. The aircraft goes at 14.40. Network control has to decide quickly. The aircraft is due to fly to Johannesburg in four and a half hours. For 365 days a year, Dubai's two runways are continuously hammered by aircraft weighing up to 425 tons. Now the airport must make urgent and expensive repairs, which will reduce its capacity. It's 9 a.m. Day one of the billion dollar 80 day rehabilitation project. Each of the runways will be closed and refurbished in turn. The southern runway first. Air traffic control is buzzing at this momentous occasion. Quite a historic moment. We're about five minutes away from the last arrival. We'll be on time. I must have a look at that A380. There. For CEO Paul Griffiths, it's short-term pain for long-term gain. It might seem a huge billion-dollar investment, but clearly, if we can keep putting 60, 70, 80, and ultimately 100 million passengers through the year, we're going to get that money back. Operating with only one runway will slash Dubai Airport's capacity by over a quarter meaning a loss of $272 million in revenue. But that will only grow if they don't hit their completion target. The plan is around 11 o'clock, isn't it? Because you need to get the guys on yeah. to start yeah. work. For Senior Vice President of Airside Operations, Chris Garton, the project must finish on time. So the next 80 days, that's critical. Yeah. Uh, and it has to be 80, not 81. Yes. So that's the challenge. Let's go and see that last arrival. The last flight descends from the sky. Watched by an army of construction workers poised to spring into action. 5,000 are set to work around the clock in shifts at the hottest time of the year. It is brutal in the summer. You're going to be talking about 40, 45 degrees. So it's going to be pretty hectic in the day. And then the night, it's up to like 80, 90% humidity. So it's really tough going in the summer. Really tough. Total closure is the only option for Dubai. Most airports have a closure from about midnight to 6 o'clock in the morning. And you can actually rebuild a runway through the night, just taking a section at a time. For us in Dubai, midnight to 3 a.m. is our busiest time, so we can't just do that. Okay, let's go. And touchdown. That's 
our last arrival. Construction crew is ready. Yeah, I'm ready to go. On the air traffic control screens, the southern runway turns red, a no-go zone for aircraft. For the next 80 days, the airport will only have one runway in operation at any one time. All right, guys, we better get going. Yep. We've got uh, 80 days, so good luck. Works manager Steve Penglaze has to secure the runway. Ah, uh, no timber under this one, huh? He must seal off the taxiways, the entrances and exits to the runway, so that the billion dollar refurbishment can start safely in two hours' time. Okay, this one should be this side. Wrong way, huh? Already, Things aren't off to a good start. Because we're blocking the taxiway from planes coming this way, everything should have a slope face in that way as well. So we just got to turn this one round. It'll work. What could go wrong? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Leave it, leave it. The last, the last, the last finish is no, we're not. No, 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 no. We're not building the Burj Khalifa here. Back. Back, 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 back. Let's just get it closed. We'll worry about straightening them afterwards. Just minutes after closing the runway, ATC faced their first test. A plane is approaching, too heavy to land. With just one runway, any emergency could close the whole airport. Takeoff and landing are the most dangerous parts of a flight. An Emirates plane on its final approach has to abort its landing. The plane's literally just going to go, go around, heading out over the water. The plane carrying up to 340 passengers is carrying too much fuel and must fly out to sea to dump it before attempting to land. In this case, the Emirates Flight Communion was expecting some delays because of the runway closure, so they had to put extra fuel on. As the aircraft's getting to about 1,500 feet, the pilot's seen that they're actually too heavy, so they're going to go around, dump some fuel, and try another approach in a couple of minutes. The extra weight would have made it hard to land safely, any trouble on Dubai's only operational runway could close the whole airport. Everybody's quite aware that it's the first day we're on single runway operations, so it's a little bit of a stressful situation for some of the people here. We've taken the world's largest international airport. It's under quite a lot of capacity pressure with two runways and we've taken away half that capacity and said, manage. So, it's a big undertaking. In an emergency, ATC can divert aircraft to the new Al Maktoum International Airport, 30 miles away. But that would be inconvenient for transit passengers and the airline. It takes 50 minutes for the plane to dump several tons of fuel, costing thousands of dollars, and come back in to land. First bit of drama, we handled it really well, so if uh, all our other bits of drama are just as bad, we'll be fine. Dubai is an important business hub. The airport plays a crucial role with flights from six continents. Customs watch some of these flights very closely. I'm looking for an individual and also looking for flights. So I'm looking at this flights coming from where and who is on this flight. Duty officer Hassan Ibrahim is watching passengers arriving from Africa checking for suspicious signs. The body language we're looking for, sometimes uh, like uh, you can see a passenger 
like he is not eye contacting with you directly. He trying to like uh, to hide something. So when you looking at him, he like turn his eyes. Or sometimes he's coming, you feel it's he's sweating more than the usual. It's his cold area. So she shouldn't be like sweating. The flight has come from Accra in Ghana. One passenger is taken aside for a baggage scan. This here, okay, and things, thick, there. The scan shows something concealed in the bottom of the suitcase. Excuse me, mom. Can you check in the bags, please? Come here, please. You have anything for the clear inside? Sure. You have anything for the clear inside? Okay. She's had a chance to come clean. Okay. Thank you, inside. Excuse me, ma'am. What do you have inside your bag here? No? Sure. Okay, ma'am. Uh, we need to take you to the, our office to go and to check your bag. Come with us. The manual search only confirms that there's something unusual about this suitcase. You are coming from where? Ghana. Ghana, Accra. Uh, how long are you staying here? Ten days. Ten days. And what the reason for the visit? Buy something. You're buying something. So you're a businesswoman. Yeah. Uh, you're a trader. So uh, this first time you're visiting Dubai? Yeah. I believe this bag belongs to you. It's your bag. It's my bag. Yeah. From Ghana to Dubai, it's your bag. So you know what it's contained? No. Because we suspect that in the bottom there you hide you're hiding something. You don't know. So, for that reason, we need your permission to open your bag and to see what you have, what inside your bag. You're okay with that. You don't know what's inside it exactly. Heavier and different the voice. On the other side, the side was lighter, the voice, when you hit it. The different sounds suggest there's a hollow compartment inside the case. Maybe yeah, she's hiding something illegal inside. So we have to open it now to make sure what's inside. Dubai has zero tolerance for any kind of drugs. The penalty can include death. Also, there's... Yeah. You can, yes, yes. You can yes, smell yes. the glue. Well, when you open the bag, right, right away, you can smell it. The strong smell of glue suggests the panel has only been stuck down recently to create a secret compartment. For customs, there's rarely a good reason for a secret compartment in a passenger's luggage. What this? Please, can you see it? Do you know what this? Do you have any idea? How it came in your bag? Or somebody maybe put it, uh, your things inside your bag? It was done by, your, by yourself, yeah? It is suspicious. 100% suspicious. I will open it to make sure what it contains. Yes, we'll take a sample for a minute. I believe it is a crystal, this type of drugs. We have to take it to the, the drug uh, deductor machine that will give us a more positive. Customs has a mobile drug testing machine which can instantly analyze the crystals. That means it is positive, and it shows the percentage. 
Metap 72% and HMTD 3%. The results show that the substance is crystal meth, a synthetic illegal drug. Two point one kg. It is not personal use. It is a lot, and I believe it is in the street market. It, uh, the value it will be like uh, five hundred thousand US dollar. Uh, we have taken the sample from the wrapping, it was in your bag, and put it in the drug, uh, drug uh, detector, and it will give us positive. Yeah, it is drug. Mm -hmm. We suspect it is a, a crystal. I don't think that she is the, the dealer or something. Just she is like a delivery, just like a delivery boy. But I am 100% that she know what it was in her bag. The passenger is taken away by the drug section for further investigation. She's in custody, awaiting trial. The minimum sentence for drug smuggling in Dubai is four years. Two point six million tons of cargo pass through Dubai Airport every year. A big earner. In a highly competitive world, Emirates cargo flights alone generate 3.1 billion US dollars, almost a sixth of its total revenue. Rolling Sky Cargo, Sky Cargo. To stay competitive, the right cargo has to get away at the right time. That's Carl's job. Departure is in one hour and 35 minutes from now. I estimate today the loading will take around about one hour five to one hour ten. 91 tons of cargo is on numbered pallets which have to be loaded onto this triple seven in the right order. Oh, well, what's wrong? Two, two. Robin! the wrong unit, they missed the pallet. Every flight has a precise loading plan to keep weight evenly distributed. It's vital the right pallets are loaded at the right time, or it can affect the plane in flight. The operator has realized that the wrong pallet has been loaded first of all. He's looking at his load plan, and that's not the pallet he's supposed to have on that position. So uh, we're going to just quickly take it off and change it. Hey! Okay! Just wait. Look at that. Look at that. The cargo hold is divided into slots for the pallets, each with a specific height and weight specification. Go ahead, Robin. Right, you're missing units, yeah? Which, uh, how many, how many? Which number, which numbers? So, it's the only piece left, right? Two. Two pieces left. Two. So, one is missing and one is available, sir, right? No, two are missing. Two are missing. Two are missing. Actually, I have to make a couple of, ch I'm going to have to make a change. The unit on 23, Papa, is not located. 11 will go to 23. I got the information quite late, so we have to change the loading around. Go! Go! It takes a special skill to manage a team when the situation is changing by the minute. Carl has two pieces of cargo missing. If he waits, he will lose time. Instead, he's going to change the plan. He'll move some cargo further back to free up space at the front for the missing pallets if they turn up. 11 goes to 23. That one goes to 23. 11? 11 goes to 23. That's the only change. The pallet Carl wants to move is already on the aircraft. Now he has to unload it to move it, using up loading time. And there's a complication. 
I hadn't actually noticed that the unit I was changing was for Copenhagen, so it asked me near the door. The aircraft is carrying cargo for two destinations. It's first of all, this is going to Copenhagen, and then onwards thereafter to Chicago. So let's change stays the same, okay? Carl yeah. needs to stay on top of the changes. He has to switch cargo round and make sure his team knows what to do. Eleven! Eleven! Go to 23! What's happening is now we're down to less than one hour before departure. Um, right, I just need to go speak with the Sky Cargo staff. Carl has freed up space in the hold, but the two pallets are still missing. Which unit? Which is it? I'm saying 702279. 279. All units are here, man. Please check the units properly. The Sky Cargo staff is telling us all the cargo is here. My loading team leader is telling me that cargo is missing. So, they're going together, we're going to go check. Confusion on the ramp is inefficient, and late delivery is not a winning business strategy. Robin, have you looked in here? Have you looked in here? With 45 minutes left, Carl must find the missing cargo. It's here! This is Lima, Lima, just for more. Yeah? It's coming, coming. 70279. Yeah, that's a firm, that's a firm, it is. Yeah, a firm. Well, we've established now that we do, in fact, have all the cargo here, so the loading changes I made were actually not necessary. Missing cargo found. Carl still has to get it all loaded and the flight away on time. Back on the southern runway, all entry points have now been safely blocked. The race is on to start and finish the work. A huge army of workers waits for the signal. You got the flag? At the height of works, 1,200 vehicles a day will enter the site. That's as many uh, lorries on the runway as we normally get aeroplanes yeah. in a normal operating day. Just changing wings for wheels. Yeah. <laughs> We're running a car park, not an airport. Yeah. <laughs> 880,000 tonnes of aggregates. 620 miles of cabling and five miles of drainage piping will be delivered to create Dubai's runways of the future. All on a construction site next to a busy live runway. Vice President of Airfield Construction, Yusuf Bazada, is hyper aware of safety. We don't have too much distance between the two runways, so we have to be very careful. It could be dangerous for people and planes. Millions of dollars of precisely engineered aircraft engine can be destroyed by a small bolt or a nut that's just left, whipped up in the vortex of the aeroplane. It's a major safety issue and we drill it into every single employee. Works manager Steve Pendlays leads the charge of vehicles. It's quite fun, really. You've got to admit, like, closing a runway is pretty spectacular. He must organise hundreds of vehicles and thousands of workers into a smooth operating construction oh, team. However, timber. I am wired. I am wired. Yeah. Timber, as you can see, it's all going swimmingly. Several trucks have already gone AWOL. It was fairly set out quite well. We got everybody over here, and the idea was that they went out one at a time, each team to their areas. It was supposed to be quite smooth. Now, as you can see, it's not quite so smooth, but we'll get it going.
when everything is back on track, the diggers move in. Within a few hours of runway closure, we have been able to start the excavation. We have to keep the same momentum in order to achieve all the targets. My biggest nightmare is that we are not able to finish work on time because the impact of that is huge for the airport. Right now, they're on target, but there's still a long way to go. On the 20th of July, planes are scheduled to depart from the refurbished runways just 15 minutes after the 80-day completion deadline. Line maintenance engineer Andy Tetley is waiting to hear whether to replace the windshield of a 777 scheduled to fly to Johannesburg in less than four hours. A member of his team is also fixing the faulty anti-ice valve. Okay, Jana Shah Singh. Okay, yeah. Andy, you're all good. Uh, we have both the ECUs in. Uh, the line's uh, connected. We have the top clamp for tightening. Okay. We're just tightening the bottom clamp. Perfect, good, yeah? Very good. Uh, this is the engine anti-ice valve. Uh, this is the one that's failed. It's one of 25,000 parts in an engine, each piece designed so that they can be easily replaced. The only way to test the new valve is to fire up the engine. Emma's Bravo Kilo on stand Alpha 5, a present mission to carry our engine idle run, please. This test will take probably two to three minutes to complete, and once the test is complete, it will come up as pass or fail. The thing what we're looking for is this area here to be completely clear of any messages whatsoever. If the messages are gone, that means there's no problem. Okay, uh, that's passed okay. I'm going to shut the number one engine down. Everything okay down there? First problem solved. Andy still needs to know whether he needs to fix the faulty windshield. Okay. Andy, the aircraft is not going to join us, first. Oh, okay. All right. All right. They want to make the right windshield as well. Okay, yeah. They've decided to actually have the aircraft grounded. We're going to go ahead with the replacement of the windshield. Andy's shift is finished. The tricky job will fall to a new team. The old windshield has to be completely removed and a brand new one put in. As the team begins to free the windscreen, they face a new challenge. It's gonna rain. Um, I mean, it's been windy all day, but I think the clouds have come in, and I can feel some, you know, a bit of drops here and there. So, I think we're gonna get it. It's unfortunate that today is one of only seven days a year when it rains in Dubai. Careful, careful, yeah. The race is on to get the windshield out and replaced before the rain comes down. Exposing the avionics of a $300 million aircraft to the elements could be disastrous. Carl is loading the flight bound for Copenhagen and Chicago. The cargo includes some temperature-sensitive pharmaceuticals, which can't wait long in the heat. Hello, Captain. Hi, afternoon. Hi, Steve. Yeah, <laughs> it's lovely. Only thing we have for you today is pharmaceuticals and 
consolidated cargo. We're looking for departure in 35 minutes, gents, yeah? That's good. So I'll come back and uh, give you a status update in about 20, all right? Okay. 35 minutes to go, and the loading appears to be back on track. Jacob, uh, Robin tells me that one of the pallets is not located. He said it was all here for this flight. There's been a mistake. Pallet 73258 is still missing. It's, it's here. It's okay. Disregard. More misinformation, Jacob. I'm gonna kill him. I'm gonna kill him. He's telling me unit's not here, and it's, I've just found it there, sitting there in that unit. Misinformation again. Buddy, can you get me a second high load record? One nine to finish the loading, please. We're getting behind schedule. The confusion over the missing cargo has cost Carl time. I've, I've asked for another high loader to come so we can put it on the front now to try and recover the time because right now we've got about 11 units to load still and it's 20 minutes to push back and we need to get the doors closed up by 1.5. Robin, get them on the front! Don't have them sitting with a unit on idle, please. This is what we don't want, is where a transporter is sitting with a unit on, not actually doing anything. With up to 15 people under his command, and not all of them speaking the same language, Carl has his work cut out to make sure the team works together smoothly. This guy is really, really making life very difficult for everybody. Any delay could be trouble for the temperature-sensitive cargo. What's he doing? If the plane is stuck on the tarmac where the temperature is over 100 degrees Fahrenheit, its air conditioning system won't be enough to keep the pharmaceutical cargo cool. I did, yeah, because we um, we've still got two units still on in the front. Because they, one of the two units was the yeah. one that was missing, that wasn't missing. So I said, rather than wait, we'll start loading in the aft and we can put the second high load on the front when it comes. But the unit was, but then after we position it, the unit was there. I hope you're going to make it. Yeah, I do. Right now, we've got 11 minutes to departure. And we've still got another seven units to load. We'll see if we can get the doors closed up on time. It's going to be very tight now, though. It normally takes 10 to 15 minutes to load a pallet. But Carl has called in extra help to speed up the process. Just closing the holes, gents. Just closing everything now, okay? Thanks very much. Against the odds, Carl delivers his part of the cargo operation with two minutes to spare. A little bit relieved. It was a bit stressful. We don't want to be unnecessary delay in these flights. Right now, I feel I've done a good job on that. I've managed to get the aircraft doors closed on time. So, yeah, I'm pretty satisfied with the corrective action we took. Dubai connects 260 destinations around the world. Over three quarters of passengers flying to Dubai are en route to one of those destinations. It's vital for Dubai's business model that they make their connections. Keeping passengers on track is also a challenge for Emirates Airport Services Manager, Mel Sabawa. Uh, let's go to Bravo, the 614. Tonight, she's concerned about a delayed flight and wants to know whether it's on its final approach to the airport. Calling PMU, any news on uh, EK22? Is it on short finals? Uh, well, we are just found in uh, next door. Okay, copy, thank you. 
The incoming passengers on the delayed EK-22 are in danger of missing their onward flights because they won't have enough time to make the connection, unless Mel can do something to help them. Today we're going to concentrate on three flights, different destinations, uh, one going to Kuala Lumpur, one going to Perth, and the other one going to Islamabad. When EK-22 from Manchester lands, Mel needs to speed 79 passengers through the largest air terminal in the world to three separate connecting flights. Okay. We've got about 25 minutes delayed. The Manchester flight was actually delayed because we had a slight issue with a pigeon in the wheel wing. A rogue pigeon 3,500 miles from Dubai is disrupting one of the biggest airlines in the world. Mel needs to buy time. She wants to hold the three flights which are waiting for the delayed passengers. Just going to speak to Sunil in uh, hub control and see the exact time that we've got for this aircraft to be delayed. The hub is the network control center. They have a complete overview of the Emirates fleet and they're the only people who can authorize delays for Mel's three flights. Hi, Sunil, it's Mel. How long have we got for these connections? Okay, the 614 has a 20 minutes delay authorized. All right, and we've got two more flights, the 344 as well. That has a 15 minutes delay authorized, and you've got a, the 422. That's got another 15 minutes delay authorized. Okay, no problem. Network control has given Mel more time. But it's still going to be tight. If we don't get those passengers in contact and to the gate in time, we will have to misconnect those passengers. Missed connections are expensive. The airline will be liable for new connecting flights and possibly accommodation. A cost they want to avoid. Now, it's up to Mel to deliver. the passengers to their onward flights until they land. When the flight from Manchester finally arrives, she will need to speed 79 passengers through the biggest airport terminal in the world. Network control may be able to help. They can reallocate the parking stand to get EK-22 as close as possible to the new departure gates. Um, just wanted to have a quick chat about the uh, EK22 connections and the parking stands. Okay. Uh, I just want to confirm that um, we've got all those, the inbound aircraft and the departures all on the same concourse? All, all of these have been planned. I've just moved EK22 from concourse Alpha to concourse Brow. Okay. okay, so we should be able to make those connections within that time. But this is just a plan. The plane still hasn't even arrived. Travelling to Islamabad? Mel puts the whole Emirates team on standby for the moment that the aircraft arrives at the gate. Deepak, any news on the UK-22? Uh, I'm going to um, play 101 Copy, perfect. Transfer desk teams, are you ready? K-22 has just landed, so everybody's in place. Let's keep our fingers crossed. Are you travelling on this flight, sir? It's touch and go whether a pigeon in Manchester will hold up dozens of passengers 
and give Emirates an expensive headache. Okay, 614 becoming critical now. 54 passengers missing. Mel has three flights. She can only deal with one personally. She has to choose between the Islamabad flight with the most missing passengers or the Perth flight, which has to depart first. I will need to look at the UK 422 to Perth. It is even more critical than this. We've only got 15 minutes to connect passengers from the same inbound, EK-22. Uh, it's vital that Mel's team identify the 26 connecting passengers bound for the onward EK-422 Perth flight as quickly as possible. 422 is critical because we have um, slot restrictions. We have to meet that slot, otherwise uh, it could be further delayed, almost up to an hour. The departure slot for the Perth flight cannot be changed. If they miss their slot, the plane will be delayed further. This will then cause delays to other flights further down the line. Mel may end up with the worst of both worlds. Passengers who miss their connections and major disruption to the Emirates network. She may be accountable. If we miss the slot because of passenger related activities when we've already delayed that departure, there will be a lot of questions asked. We'll need to make a decision at least 10 minutes before departure if those passengers are not there. Just hold the buggy, we might need to go on the 422. They are coming. Are they? Yep. Excellent. The passengers for the Islamabad flight are on their way to the gate. It's down there. Uh, I'll... The 422 is... Zach? Stop it. Zach? Is... Okay, they're on their way. Let's go to the 422. Yeah? Happy that the Islamabad connecting passengers are on their way, Mel switches to the EK-22 Perth flight, which is now critical. It's missing 26 passengers. 422 is an absolute priority now, so I think my attention needs to be focused on that one to make sure we've got all the connections. If the Perth flight misses its departure slot, it will be costly and could damage the airline's reputation with the passengers. Okay, I can't see any passengers here, which is a worry. The passengers from the EK-22 Manchester flight still aren't at the gate. Are they all 422? Excellent. Are you all inbound from Manchester? Yeah. Yes, all inbound from Manchester. Yes, you made it. Was it a rush? Yes. The delayed Manchester passengers just make the flight. But it still won't go. We have one other passenger missing that was uh, scheduled to be in the lounge. He's not reported. Yeah. It's 21.41 right now, so four minutes. Yeah, it's already done. It's not registered in the last decision. Not registered? Yeah. Uh, as per, uh, as per the, the lounge decision. Holding over. Okay, please. Right. The final missing passenger isn't from the Manchester flight. But Mel has a schedule to deliver. She closes the gate. Excellent. Well done. So 15 minutes. Actually, no, more. 17 minutes before departure, yeah? Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. All three flights make their new departure times. It's been tight, but the airline's schedule is on track. Yep, 
It's 24 hours after a 777 has been grounded to replace a faulty windshield. One of Dubai's rare rainstorms may have come at the worst moment and compromised the repair. Engineer Andy needs to make sure the sealant is cured or the plane won't be safe to fly. There was an incident within the last 20 years of an aircraft in, in the UK that the whole front windshield actually came off in flight and it basically blew out and that pilot was sucked out. So anything to do with these windows have to be done perfect. The flight was operated by another airline and amazingly the pilot lived. If the sealant hasn't dried properly, the flight will stay on the ground. The repair is complete. The plane is back in service, ready to earn its keep. Everybody works together. Everybody has to try uh, to make sure that the aircraft will go on time. But that that doesn't mean it will go on time at any cost. It will go on time when everything's perfect. So if the aircraft serves full, everybody's happy, then it will go. In this episode, customs find a secret compartment in a passenger's luggage. It is suspicious. 100% suspicious. Missing cargo gives everyone the runaround. Robin, get them on the front! I'm gonna kill him! I'm gonna kill him! And it's judgment day as Dubai's billion dollar runway closure begins. Leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it. No, 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 we're not building the Burj Khalifa here. Back, 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 back. Dubai International Airport. The busiest global hub on the planet and aiming to stay there. Clear for takeoff. But perfection is never easy. Not finished, it's supposed to be finished. More planes to service. So we open the number three engine. More situations to deal with. What do you mean, life snakes? Oh, sorry. More smugglers to stop. This is the heroin here and massive engineering projects to complete on time. It's non-stop, 24-7. Hey, hey, Everything is time, time, time. It's the job of 90,000 staff from all over the world to make this the ultimate airport. Dubai International Airport is a huge money-making machine. Every year, aviation contributes $22 billion to the economy. As one of the busiest airports in the world, any interruption to its schedule costs money. Emirates Airline has the largest fleet of A380s and 777s in the world. Keeping them running perfectly is vital. Uh, what I'm basically doing at the moment is just the right, what we call a GVI, which is a, a general visual inspection of anything you can see and miss on the ground. So I'm checking the wheels for condition, the strut, uh, any oil leaks. If Andy Tedley finds a problem when a plane's on the ramp, he fixes it there and then, ideally. Taking a plane out of service is costly. It's not earning. We've actually just got um, a task on one of our 777 300ERs, and it's coming with a left-hand engine anti-ice valve, which has been locked open. Anti-ice valves prevent ice from forming around the engines. The freezing temperatures of high altitude can fall to minus 70 degrees Fahrenheit. This is the nacelle, this is the leading edge. 
so you've got hot air which is fed from the engine will heat up this whole ring on the front to stop any ice forming because what you don't want is thick ice to form here and then in flight it can actually break off ice is very heavy and what we don't want to do is to go and cause any damage to the blades or even ingestion of the engine and he needs to get the valve replaced before the plane leaves in five hours the valve itself is only quite small it's in an awkward position and it's on the top of the engine and he needs to start but he can't. The jet fuel in the engine can reach up to 3,600 degrees Fahrenheit. The whole engine is very hot, so you have to be, everything's hot to touch, so we normally have to wait a little while for it to cool down. While it cools, Andy checks with the captain for any other problems. The right window. Shield heating has failed, um, so I'll have to have a look at that. That is um, that's an item that we wasn't expecting. Unexpected and potentially troublesome for Andy. Heating protects the windshield when the plane is flying at altitude. Because it's very cold outside, if we was to say have a bird strike and this was ice cold, it's actually extremely brittle. And if, if you have a bird strike, the worst thing that would happen, it would just shatter. Whereas if we have the windshield heated up, it becomes slightly more flexible. If you have a, a bird strike, it will just cause it to flex rather than shatter. The onboard computer system logs faults. Now it's showing a problem with the other side of the windshield as well. Now it's a bit more of an issue because we've got, we've got the left and the right hand side which have got faults. This could impact the whole Emirates schedule. The aircraft can fly safely with a fault on one side. With both sides damaged, it's risky, not something Emirates will want to chance. But it's not a simple fix. The whole windshield needs to be replaced. When and where it's repaired is a decision for Emirates Network Control Center. They must decide whether to fix the windshield on the stand or to take the plane out of service. We've been in contact with the office. At the moment, it's a 50-50 chance whether the aircraft will go or not. We're expecting a call. It is now 10 past 10. The aircraft goes at 14.40. Network control has to decide quickly. The aircraft is due to fly to Johannesburg in four and a half hours. For 365 days a year, Dubai's two runways are continuously hammered by aircraft weighing up to 425 tons. Now the airport must make urgent and expensive repairs, which will reduce its capacity. It's 9 a.m. Day one of the billion dollar 80 day rehabilitation project. Each of the runways will be closed and refurbished in turn. The southern runway first. Air traffic control is buzzing at this momentous occasion. Quite a historic moment. We're about five minutes away from the last arrival. We'll be on time. I must have a look at that A380. For CEO Paul Griffiths, it's short-term pain for long-term gain. It might seem a huge billion dollar investment, but clearly if we can keep putting 60, 70, 80 and ultimately 100 million passengers through the year, we're going to get that money back. Operating with only one runway will slash Dubai Airport's capacity by over a quarter. 
meaning a loss of $272 million in revenue. But that will only grow if they don't hit their completion target. The plan is around 11 o'clock, isn't it? Because you need to get the guys on yeah. to start yeah. work. For senior vice president of airside operations, Chris Garton, the project must finish on time. So the next 80 days, that's critical, uh, and it has to be 80, not 81. Yes. So that's the challenge. Let's go and see that last arrival. The last flight descends from the sky. Watched by an army of construction workers poised to spring into action. 5,000 are set to work around the clock in shifts at the hottest time of the year. It's brutal in summer. You're going to be talking about 40, 45 degrees. So it's going to be pretty hectic in the day. And then the night, it's up to like 80, 90% humidity. So it's really tough going in the summer. Really tough. Total closure is the only option for Dubai. Most airports have a closure from about midnight to six o'clock in the morning, and you can actually rebuild a runway through the night, just taking a section at a time. For us in Dubai, midnight to 3 a.m. is our busiest time, so we can't just do that. Okay, let's go. That's our last arrival. Construction crew is ready. Yeah, I'm ready to go. On the air traffic control screens, the southern runway turns red, a no-go zone for aircraft. For the next 80 days, the airport will only have one runway in operation at any one time. Right, guys, we better get going. Yep. We've got uh, 80 days, so good luck. Thank you. Works manager Steve Penglaze has to secure the runway. Uh, no timber under this one, huh? He must seal off the taxiways the entrances and exits to the runway, so that the billion dollar refurbishment can start safely in two hours time. Okay, this one should be this side. Wrong way, huh? Already, things aren't off to a good start. Because we're blocking the taxiway from planes coming this way, everything should have a slope face in that way as well. So we just got to turn this one round. It'll work. What could go wrong? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Leave it, leave it. Go last, go last, go last, finish this. No, we're not. No, 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 no. We're not building the Burj Khalifa here. Back, 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 back. Let's just get it closed. We'll worry about straightening them afterwards. Just minutes after closing the runway, ATC faced their first test. A plane is approaching, too heavy to land. With just one runway, any emergency could close the whole airport. Takeoff and landing are the most dangerous parts of a flight. An Emirates plane on its final approach has to abort its landing. The plane's literally just trying to go, go around, heading out over the water. The plane carrying up to 340 passengers is carrying too much fuel and must fly out to sea to dump it before attempting to land. In this case, the Emirates flight coming in was expecting some delays because of the runway closure, so they had to put extra fuel on. As the aircraft's getting to about 1,500 feet, the pilots seen that they're actually too heavy, so they're going to go around, dump some fuel, and try another approach in a couple of minutes. The extra weight would have made it hard to land safely. Any trouble on Dubai's only operational runway could close the whole airport. 
everybody's quite aware that it's the first day we're on single runway operations, so it's a little bit of a stressful situation for some of the people here. We've taken the world's largest international airport. It's under quite a lot of capacity pressure with two runways and we've taken away half that capacity and said manage. So it's a big undertaking. In an emergency, ATC can divert aircraft to the new Al Maktoum International Airport 30 miles away. But that would be inconvenient for transit passengers and the airline. It takes 50 minutes for the plane to dump several tons of fuel costing thousands of dollars and come back in to land. First bit of drama, we handled it really well, so if uh, all our other bits of drama are just as bad, we'll be fine. Dubai is an important business hub. The airport plays a crucial role with flights from six continents. Customs watch some of these flights very closely. I'm looking for an individual and also looking for flights. So I'm looking at this flights coming from where and who is on this flight. Duty officer Hassan Ibrahim is watching passengers arriving from Africa, checking for suspicious signs. The body language we're looking for, sometimes uh, like uh, you can see a passenger, like he's not eye contacting with you directly. He's trying to like uh, to hide something. So when you're looking at him, he like turn his eyes. Or sometimes he's coming, you feel it's He's sweating more than the usual. It's, he's cold area, so she shouldn't be like sweating. The flight has come from Accra in Ghana. One passenger is taken aside for a baggage scan. This here, okay. And things. Thick. Yeah. The scan shows something concealed in the bottom of the suitcase. Excuse me, Mom. Can you check in the bags, please? Come here, please. You have anything for the clear inside? Sure. You have anything for the clear inside? Okay. She's had a chance to come clean. Thank you, inside. Excuse me, ma'am. What do you have inside your bag here? I don't know. You don't know? Sure. Okay, ma'am. Uh, we need to take you to the, our office. We want to check your bag. Come with us. The manual search only confirms that there's something unusual about this suitcase. You are running from where? Ghana. Ghana, Accra. Uh, how long are you staying here? Ten days. Ten days. And what the reason for the visit? I'll buy something. You're buying something. So you're a businesswoman. Yeah. I'm a trader. You're a trader. So uh, this is the first time you're visiting Dubai? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I believe this bag belongs to you. It's your bag. It's my bag. Yeah. From Ghana to Dubai, it's your bag. So you know what it's contained? No. Because we suspect that in the bottom there you hide you hiding something. You don't know. So for that reason, we need your permission to open your bag and to see what you what inside your bag. You're okay with that? You don't know what's inside it exactly. Heavier and different the voice from the other side. The side was lighter. The voice when you hit it. 
The different sounds suggest there's a hollow compartment inside the case. Maybe she's hiding something illegal inside. So we have to open it now to make sure what's inside. Dubai has zero tolerance for any kind of drugs. The penalty can include death. Also, there's... Yeah. You can... Yes, yes. You can yes, smell yes. the glue. Well, when you open the bag, right, right away, you can smell it. The strong smell of glue suggests the panel has only been stuck down recently to create a secret compartment. For customs, there's rarely a good reason for a secret compartment in a passenger's luggage. What this? Do you see? Do you know what this? Do you have any idea? How it's came in your bag? Or somebody maybe put it, uh, your things inside your bag? It was done by you, by yourself, yeah? It is suspicious. 100% suspicious. I will open it to make sure what it contains. Yes, we will take a sample from it. I believe it is a crystal. This type of drugs. We have to take it to the, the drug uh, detector machine. That will give us a more positive. Customs has a mobile drug testing machine which can instantly analyze the crystals. That means it is positive. And it shows the percentage. Methab, 72%, and HMTD, 3%. The results show that the substance is crystal meth, a synthetic illegal drug. Two point one kg. It is not personal use. It is a lot. And I believe it is in the street market that uh, the value it will be like uh, five hundred thousand US dollar.